Hello and welcome. My name is Waldo, and in this video, I'll be replacing the seals in this hydraulic cylinder. This cylinder is leaking quite badly from the seal. Because the cylinder is so large and heavy, it'll probably be quite a challenge to repair it. The first challenge is to unscrew this main threaded cap. I'll need to fabricate a special tool to grab into the little indentations in the cap so that I can put force on it to unscrew it. Once the cap is loosened, I can then remove the rod and the piston, and then remove all the seals and o-rings. I'll bring the seals and o-rings to the local hydraulic shop where they'll measure them and order new ones for me. Then, assembly is just the reverse of disassembly. Here you can see how badly the hydraulic cylinder is leaking. It's definitely something I'll need to fix before I put this machine into service. I'm using a piece of cardboard onto which I'll trace the outline of the cylinder cap. I'll later transfer this shape to a piece of steel plate. All right, so I've made this template and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this shape out of this uh, piece of scrap quarter inch steel plate and I'm gonna use a plasma cutter to do it. So for right now, I'm just gonna trace out the outline. I'm gonna leave a piece sticking out on this end over here uh, so I can fit a big pipe over it uh, so I can get some leverage to turn this. Uh, I measured the piece of pipe that I have on hand is about an inch and five eighths. So I'm gonna do about an inch and a half. I'm gonna start with the outside just so I can uh, get a feel for this. That was uh, molten steel flying at my face. Not the most pleasant thing. I think the camera may have stopped recording partway through that, which is really annoying. Um, but in case you didn't see it, uh, it the center piece here just fell right out when I finished cutting it. So that means you actually you did a good job because it there was no there wasn't enough slag left uh, holding it in place when it falls out like that. A lot of the time you need a hammer to bang it out. All right, I don't know what's going on, but the camera keeps stopping recording. Anyway, here's the piece. Uh, it's probably gonna take quite a bit of uh, grinding and test fitting to make sure that it fits properly. But uh, yeah, I'm also gonna tr probably gonna reinforce it a little bit uh, to make sure it doesn't bend. Uh, Cause I probably am gonna have to apply hundreds of foot pounds of torque uh, just to get this, uh, this cap off. All right, so I just did a test fit and it's a little bit on the small side, which is good because I can always remove material. Uh, it's adding it back that's kind of tricky. So I have quite a bit of grinding to do and uh, test fitting and back and forth until I get it to be just right. All right, so I have this all ground down and test fit and it actually fits fairly well. What I'm gonna do next is strengthen it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, eighth inch thick uh, flat bar and I'm going to weld it on and bend it in place around the outside of this to keep it from flexing and twisting. Uh, and then 
After that, probably the weakest spot is gonna be this right here. So I think I will strengthen this. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna add any pieces of steel to it or if maybe I'll just run some beads across it to thicken up the material, which might be sufficient. Oh, uh, this is actually, this is my first time using my new uh, Miller Multimatic 220 AC-DC uh, welding machine uh, with for MIG welding. So it should be interesting to see how this goes. Well, getting a little porosity because it just all of a sudden started getting windy, but it's not that big of a deal. All right, so after I finished filming for the day, I figured out why my camera kept stopping recording while filming welding and plasma cutting. I used a Canon DSLR as my main video camera, and it has an infrared sensor on the front of it, which is intended for use with a remote control. Well, as it turns out, welding arcs put out infrared light, which kept tricking the camera's sensor into thinking that it was being triggered by a remote control. As a result, it kept taking pictures like the one that's on screen now. In the future, I'll cover up the sensor, but for now, some of my welding shots will be interrupted. Oh man, that is beautiful. This is like, I really haven't done much MIG welding. Uh, most of my experience is with flux core, which is very similar, but it's turning out really well. Well, I wasn't planning on turning this video into a review video, but this machine is amazing. I mean, it is so smooth. There's n virtually no spatter. The welds look beautiful. Um, it's just, I'm so happy with this. It's amazing. All right, so um, up next, I'm gonna cut this off here because I don't need this to be that long. And I'm thinking probably what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run some beads. Well, I'm gonna grind this, uh, the mill scale off this first, but um, I'm probably just gonna run some beads along this on both sides, just to thicken it up, to strengthen it so it doesn't like twist or anything. Um, that's probably the easiest way to strengthen this. So this is the tool that I created, this sickle-shaped tool. So um, it fits around the cylinder, and then there are these little uh, 
um, I don't know, these things. Uh, they uh, lock into the uh, cap of the hydraulic cylinder and allow me to twist it off. Um, so I welded, you know, a few beads on the end there uh, for added strength. Now just imagine uh, me taking a pipe and sticking it on this end here and like a really long pipe. So I can basically put all my weight on it and have a ton of leverage. So uh, we'll see how it works. Also, here's the welding machine that I'm using. Uh, Miller Multimatic 220 ACDC. Uh, I primarily bought it for its uh, TIG capabilities, but uh, this is the first time I'm using it for MIG and yeah, it's, it's been great. I can't say enough good things about it. All right, so this is the tool I created and it fits over the cylinder like this. It's a little tight, I might need to adjust it, but... And then I have this approximately six foot long uh, piece of Schedule 40 inch and a half pipe to use as leverage. See that it's like flared out over here. I thought I felt something giving. I'm gonna have to make some more slight modifications to this. I think I need to take off a little more material over here. Yeah, I gotta touch this up some more uh, to make it so it fits better. All right, I'm gonna try the air chisel. All right, so I have a helper. We're gonna try the air hammer and this tool at the same time, see if that works. Ready? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. All right, so I'm gonna make some modifications to the tool because it was just slipping off yesterday. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna weld this little piece of pipe onto the, uh, this tab here. Uh, this is where I fit that big piece of pipe over for leverage. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is not only does it strengthen it, but primarily it'll actually increase the surface area that the larger pipe has to grab onto it, so it'll disform it less, hopefully. So, uh, here we go. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to weld this tool right to the cap. Uh, I'm pretty sure the cap is some type of steel, not cast iron, so I should be able to get away with this. Last time the tool was slipping off, so uh, tack welding it to the cap should prevent it from slipping off. Alright, so I got four little tacks in there. I really don't want it to go too crazy with this, so I guess we'll see if that's enough. Alright, let's see if this works. At least two of the welds popped off. Probably the third one did too, although I can't see it.
I mean, I'm putting all of my weight, over 180 pounds, uh, on a six foot pipe and it's not budging. So uh, this thing's gonna put up a little bit of a fight. Okay, Ready? All right, so I went ahead and added some padding here to hopefully protect the rod from banging against the metal here. And I also added a strap here uh, to hopefully catch the end of the rod and the piston when that comes out, um, if it comes out. I'm getting a shoulder workout today. Just one shoulder though. All right, so I think the cylinder is fully extended at this point. Uh, the rod is out as far as it would normally come out. So at the end of this rod in here, there should be a piston, which I would assume is right up against this end cap right here. Uh, and I assume this end cap should just come right out. I just hope it doesn't take too much force. But that being said, I put quite a bit of force on it and it's not coming out. So uh, I don't know, I just might have to get creative here. We'll see what happens. All right, well, I think I'm going to apply some heat here to see if I can get this outer uh, cylinder uh, shell body to expand and maybe let this cap go.
guess that worked. I succeeded and I don't think I caused any damage. All right, so let me just show you the aftermath of what happened here. So the uh, rod and piston shot out of this. Um, actually, I'm kind of thinking there might have been a, maybe there's some leaking in the uh, valve mechanism in here, because what I was doing is I was trying to operate uh, and extend the dipper, which is this piece right here, so that I could level this out and get it lower. And then I, when it actually happened, I was actually uh, trying to move the bucket a little bit to try to dig it in as well to get this lower so that when I was pulling out the, uh, the rod, uh, there wouldn't be such an angle there. Uh, but anyway, so there was a bunch of hydraulic pressure built up in this boom cylinder and it shot it out. Uh, there was also quite a bit of water in there, as you can see from the ice here. Uh, I also noticed a lot of water coming out as well. Like the seal was so bad, it must have been leaking. So the engine hoist uh, luckily caught the rod and piston and prevented that from hitting the ground. It did hit the ground on this end, but that's fine. Uh, so I don't think there was any damage here. And uh, yeah, so I have a little bit of cleanup to do, but I think I'm in pretty decent shape. All right, so unfortunately, um, my three quarter inch drive socket set only goes up to two inches, which is nowhere near big enough for this knot here. I haven't measured it, but it's pretty big. I'm gonna try the 24 inch wrench here. I don't think I'm gonna be able to put enough force on this thing to move it. Uh, it's worth a shot. No, it doesn't even open big enough. With current world events. There's no way I'm gonna get uh, a, a socket that's big enough for this. Um, uh, realistically, I need bigger sockets. I probably need a one inch drive set, a one inch drive impact wrench, and a bigger air compressor to power it. But, but that's not gonna happen uh, anytime soon. It's taking a long time to get things. Even from Amazon, it's taking a long time. So uh, I'm thinking I might just bring this to the hydraulic shop and let them deal with it. And just for the fun of it, I wanna measure this nut just to see how big it is. It's about uh, two and three quarters of an inch. All right, well, I'm on my way to the hydraulic shop right now. I have the rod and piston in the back of the truck. It feels really unfortunate to sort of give in like this, but uh, I'm sure I could have gotten this thing apart um, if I had enough time and if I had the right tools. But as it is right now, I don't have the right tools. And realistically, I'm not going to be able to get the right tools for, I don't know, it, it would take a while. And it's also going to be very expensive. So um, realistically, what I need is I probably need a set of one inch drive impact sockets. I need a one inch drive impact wrench and then I need a bigger air compressor. Uh, so I have a three quarter inch drive uh, impact wrench and a set of three quarter inch drive impact sockets. And those are great and all, they only go up to two inches though. And, and the nut on this is uh, two and three quarters of an inch. Also the air compressor that I have is really not sufficient. It's barely able to run my three quarter inch impact wrench. And even then it, it runs it probably not even full power for a very short period of time and then it just totally runs out of air and has to take minutes to, to recharge or to fill back up with air. So uh, this is, yeah, realistically, I'm, I'm looking at probably a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars worth of tools needed to do this. Um, and, and seriously, getting stuff shipped right now, it takes a long time. Buying stuff on Amazon with Prime, you don't get two day shipping right now. You're lucky to get four days or perhaps even more than that. Uh, supply lines up for things are kind of running short in some cases, uh, things are back ordered. Um, so uh, I'm not gonna have these tools for a while. Uh, even if I were gonna go spend $1,500 on tools right now, which I'm not. So anyway, I did quite a bit of work just getting this cylinder apart when I could have just brought the whole cylinder itself uh, to the hydraulic shop, but um, not all is lost. So first of all, it probably, I would imagine it'll save me some money because the hydraulic shop will have less work to do. Um, if it was that hard to get the cap off the cylinder for myself, it probably also would be hard for them. Now, I'm sure they have more experience dealing with this kind of thing, so they probably could get it off faster. They might even have some special tools that would help them do it. But one of the big wins here is that I did push myself past my comfort level. You know, I've never done something like this before, and that's a good thing because I did a lot of learning. Uh, maybe you guys learned a little bit as well. And uh, 
that's great. You know, I would have liked to push myself farther than that, but uh, there's always next time, I guess. But at least this way, hopefully I'll be able to get this machine going uh, sooner than later. Well, I just dropped the cylinder off. As it turns out, they're actually pretty busy right now. I guess a lot of guys are getting cylinders rebuilt. So uh, it's not gonna be done this week, and that means it's gonna delay the video by quite a while. So uh, my apologies for that. By the time this video is released, you guys will know how long it took. They also estimated it might be a couple hundred bucks to get it rebuilt. Uh, I guess they charge $85 an hour for work plus parts. So uh, yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. And in the meantime, I'll go back to uh, working on the uh, project truck. I got the hydraulic cylinder back after a little over a week and it ended up costing about $310. All right, so the guy at the hydraulic shop told me to coat this with uh, grease. So I'm gonna do what he says. try using ratchet straps to pull this cylinder into place. Alright, so the problem I'm having is getting this seal here to compress enough to fit inside the, uh, the body of the cylinder. So I went ahead and stuck a couple zip ties on it to uh, see if I can use that to compress it. So I'm going to tighten these down and we'll see what happens. Alright, the zip ties didn't work, so now I'm going to see if I can get a hose clamp to, to compress it. I'm not sure if this grease fitting works up here, so I'm gonna hook the grease gun up and see if any grease comes out. Oh yeah, oh, all right, it comes out down here. Okay, yeah, it does work, great.
now for the moment of truth. This thing should be all back together, so let's see if it works. Well, that went back together easier than expected. The cylinder no longer leaks, and the hardest part was getting the piston seal to compress enough to fit in the barrel of the cylinder. Now, I'm really tempted to try driving this, but that is for the next video, so don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see this machine in action. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.